have anything to do with America? Oh, no. No. Do not. <laughs> Hank, should you write an essay about Hitler? <laughs> no. No. Do not. I am not. I'm not joking. And I'm not trying to make fun of a student from last year, but somebody did not pass because they wrote an essay about him. I know about Hitler. He was the guy with. Okay. No. This is history of the Americas. You must do the history of the Americas questions because that's what you're supposed to do. So take a good three minutes. I mean, it may seem like you're wasting time, but you're investing towards good questions. So pick questions that you think you can answer, and then do what we just did. You've got to brainstorm what terms or what themes relate to it, and then use those to construct a quick, uh, you know, if it was compare and contrast the governments of, of uh, what's colonial, new world, or something like that. Okay, we've got we've got some some uh, differences uh, between viceroys and maybe joint stock companies about who makes decisions. It's very different. Okay, but we also have some similarities between something like mercantilist policy and navigation acts. Okay, there you go. Similarity, difference, goals. Okay. So that's my. Do you, do you have any questions about like the first three minutes? Go through and read the questions slowly. It's okay. Don't freak out just yet. Um, you should also have a watch with you. I'm sure that they'll provide something. Actually, I'm not sure if they'll provide it, but you need to have a timer there, and you need to set realistic goals for you, because if you don't finish the third essay, you don't get points for it. They don't do two out of three, so you need to make sure that you budget time for each of them. Like. Um, you know, if, if you want to be as OCD as you want to, three minutes brainstorm, you know, five minutes structure, or something like that, then, then that's fine, but stick to it because you have to make sure you answer all of the questions. Okay? All right, let's get back to talking about it. Any questions about the first few minutes? It'll be worth your time. Okay, let's get back to talking about content. Okay, so polit political and economic relations. <laughs> I thought, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I thought somebody was attracted to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next, understand the role of mercantilism in motivating and shaping the imperial policies in in the colonizing nations. Other nations. Oh, oh, stop. <laughs> um, all right. Span Spanish mercantilist system, case of the Contratacian. Cross off fleet system because we didn't. Well, we didn't talk about it. If you want to, you can learn about the fleet system. Um, was Spanish mercantilist policy successful? Why or why not? And then English mercantilist policy, navigation acts, and salutary neglect. Na navigation acts is, is, far, is a far more specific example than salutary neglect, but you could speak about sal salutary neglect in general as well. Um, and lastly, know the Bourbon reforms and how they affected the Spanish colonies. Mr. Drew? Yeah. Were large centralized corporations like the East yeah, the East India Trading Company, was, was that considered mer mercantilist? No, mercantilist would be, uh, well, if the government sh sanctioned someone like the East India Company to, to bring those. Mercantilist is just talking about your role is natural resources, our role is, is, um, is industrialized products or, or we sell you we sell you manufactured products, which doesn't have to be like a, a car. It could be just something like rum. You sell us the sugar, you send us the sugar, and we send you the rum, and we benefit. So if you remember last year, I talked about all the dollar signs going towards the mother nation. That's what mercantilist policy is in general. So something like the East India Company would be kind of some aspect of it, but but it's it's not exactly mercantilist policy. Does that answer your question? Okay. Um, any question about political and economic relationships? Okay, next, social and economic organizations <coughs> of the immigrant populations. So social organization, Spanish and Portuguese colonies, we have a caste system based on uh, race, on race, based on race, or what is that supposed to be? I don't know, race and place of birth, little or no social mobility, the humble documents, Social organization, the English colony, we have the class system based largely on wealth and much uh, social mobility. Um, next to that, I want you to, um, kind of like what we did before, talking about social 
hierarchies, um, mobility. Um, I want you to write down some terms that you remember that, that relate to issues of caste, <coughs> issues of, of uh, groups of people and how they're organized. If you want to cheat, you can look down at the rest of it and pull out some of those terms. Writing down uh, terms that you remember dealing with social and economic organization in the colonies. All right. Uh, okay, what do you got? Captain. Encomienda. Where's that go? Over here? No. Oh, over here? Encomienda? Somebody tell me what encomienda is. If not, it's okay. It's kind of like Mary. It's a system of labor. It, it, that's correct. It is, a, it is a labor system. And we'll talk about labor systems over there. What in Encomienda, if I, if I conquer this land for the... I got a sword this year. Actually, I got like three swords here. So if I conquer this, this land for the king, um, this land right here. Remember Reconquista, you take over the land, you get the Muslims there, they'll, they'll work for you. So guess what happens in the New World? The same thing. You take over this land and you get to, to use all of the labor that is on there, meaning native populations. So in Comey, oh, but what are you supposed to do? Teach. Teach them what? Christianity, just stand in front of them and say, hey, you're all Christian. Oh, you don't speak the language? Okay, get to work. <laughs> Okay, so you told me that you're supposed to convert them and you're supposed to take care of them and then you get to use them as basically free labor. What about over in Britain? What, what labor system do we see that starts in, 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 in the, the, when you're talking, uh, most of these questions are going to be compare and contrast, find some similarities and differences. If you're talking about North America, you need to be clear and more nuanced than saying the labor and labor <coughs> system in North America was this. There were a lot of labor systems. So you need to say, make sure you're using language like in some parts of the of British colonial America or something like that. So, but what was one labor system used? Uh, Mary? Indentured servitude. Indentured servitude. Somebody give me the quick rundown of indentured servitude. Look at me. I'm poor. Yes? Um, someone pays you to go to the New World. Yeah. And you work for a couple of years, and, the, and, and then what happens? And, you and then you're supposed to be free. Okay? Right? Good times. Um, what are some other terms dealing with social, uh, social hierarchies or something like that? <coughs> Justin? Frontiers of inclusion. Yeah, good. Frontier of inclusion and frontier of exclusion. We're bringing people into our good. <laughs> We're bringing people into our society. We are excluding people from our society. Okay, especially during colonization. So, but one of the things that 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 I'm going to say now, so that I don't forget to, is if you use and I, I say this at the bottom, if you use these terminology, um, I hate to tell you this, well, I don't hate to tell you this, but not everyone knows what we mean by when we say the Great Divide. These are, these are some things like frontier of inclusion and exclusion are frameworks of understanding that, that um, the people that have taught this class at Tracy High School have developed. So if you mention the Great Divide, which I think is really good, and, and really shows you know, a deeper understanding of these issues, um, you need to tell them what it is. Pretend like they have no clue whatsoever. So if you say frontier of inclusion, <coughs> do not assume that they know what you're talking about. If you say frontier of exclusion, do not assume that they, they know what you're talking about because odds are it's somebody in Wales who has no clue what that means. Okay, what? 